Hey, it's Jack Maxwell. Welcome to my Sunday virtual cocktail hour. I don't know what we're calling it. Something like that, where we just hang out and talk about whatever's on your mind. You can ask me anything and we have a drink together. So uh, I would like to know what you're drinking. So therefore, I'll tell you that this is a rye with soda and a little bit of lime. Why a rye? Ah, I'll tell you that in a little while. So uh, you know what this is. I want you to comment and ask, of course, about anything. But tell me what you're drinking and why you drink it. And uh, you can even say what's on your mind that has nothing to do with this show, nothing to do with your drinking. It could be anything that's going on in your life, anything. And we'll put it out there. Maybe you're asking other people who are watching this for advice, anything. It's a wide open forum. I just want to hang out with you, with my buddies, and have a cocktail because this is how we can do it for now, I suppose. I'm in Arizona, and uh, the numbers here are, are spiking, so uh, we try to be extra safe. Wherever you are, let me know. Tell me where you're from uh, and uh, what's going on in your life. It's as simple as that. So in, uh, let me see here. I guess I was 15 years old, and at the time, I was into music, like, like most kids that age, sports, and girls, in no particular order, depending on the day, I suppose. And uh, not much into cocktails at that time. It would be soon after, but maybe not right then. Uh, and I heard this song, and it just, I mean, I was, look, at there's the Stones back in the day. The Eagles were popular then. Uh, Journey, Foreigner, Boston. I'm sure I loved Boston because I was from Boston. You know, when you're a kid. You just own so much of things like that. You, you're so upset when your sports team loses. Um, but they were great, too, as well, Boston. And sad ending to uh, Mr. Brad Delp, lead singer of Boston. Left a note saying, I'm a lonely soul and committed suicide. Uh, but I heard this song when I was 15. And I said, what is that? Not only is it great music, it's a cool story. So I, I said to my friend, I described the song, goes, yeah, yeah. And we were probably, he knew what it was. We were maybe at an arcade or whatever we were doing at 15. And the song came on and he started singing it. And I turned to him. I said, that's not the words. How many times have we done that when we were kids, right? I said, wait a minute. What are, what are you singing? And he started saying, ow, werewolves of thunder. I said, it's not thunder, it's London. So we had this long, exaggerated discussion about whether it was werewolves of thunder or werewolves of London. And of course, we had to, we had to go to the, the high priest, uh, the Supreme Court of Credibility, his older brother. So when we got home and we each made our case to the older brother, and he said, it's thunder, you know, like, you know, you, ooh, the sound and the passion and whatever, something like that. And I said, no, it's London, because they talk about Mayfair and Kent and uh, the Queen. And the older brother uh, sided with me, like, like people's court, like Judge Wapner. He said, no, Jack's right. It's Wills of London. And we said, well, who is that? And he said, that's Warren Zevon which I'm sure you already know by now. And this is the album, Excitable Boy, 1978. Not only did it have Werewolves of London on it, Lawyers, Guns, and Money, great song, Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. What writing. And at the end, he throws in Patty Hearst. And I said, this guy is great. I, I get his stuff. He's sarcastic. Uh, he's, he's His wit, uh, his sense of humor. Uh, and it's also very dry. It's also, he's so wry. So this is for Warren Zevon, my rye, because he is rye. Now, of course, you could say, well, why not a pina colada, a trade of Vicks, like the song says? That would be too on the nose. I don't think he would appreciate that. When I heard that song, every time it came on, and we all have songs like that, I would never turn the channel. And if it came on in the middle, because back in the day, you know, I didn't buy the album. It would just come on when it came on. I would need to hear it, and I would sing it at full blast. And my my friend finally acquiesced and said, okay, I guess it's London, but Thunder would have been better. <laughs> he still had to argue the point. And it was 
such a great song that when a friend of mine and I went down to Atlantic City from Boston, this is the early 80s now, probably 81, I guess, uh, they had this place that would make you a mixtape, but it would take all, uh, all I don't know, whatever, an hour, two hours, whatever it takes to play the length of that song, and then they would put the next one on. It was on a cassette tape. And I remember the first song, I don't know, maybe because I did it alphabetically or whatever, or it's just the first song that came to my mind was Allison by Elvis Costello. What a great song. And the second song, Werewolves of London. Great writing, just the imagery. It just so happens at the same time, 1981, there was a movie called An American Werewolf in London. And uh, it's a great movie. And of course, the song wasn't a part of that. I don't know. Why? It would have been perfect. But hey, who knows? Who knows why they, you know, do the things they do. Maybe negotiations fell out. I thought it would have been perfect. But it's such a fun movie. And I worked at a movie theater, so I got to watch it all the time. But this song has kept coming around for me over and over again. I just happened to flip on the television in 2002. And I saw what turned out to be Warren Zevon's last appearance on David Letterman. And he was talking about dying. He eventually passed from mesothelioma a year later. And David Letterman asked him a question. And it was so profound that I'm going to save that and turn back the clock just a little bit, just to show you before he gets to that, this weird, strange, but wonderful connection I feel to that song, but also to Warren Zevon. I know the purists out there are going to say, oh, that wasn't his best song. It might have been this one or that one, a Carmelita, a poor, poor, pitiful me that he wrote for Linda Ronstadt. Hello from Canada. Hi, Kathleen. And, uh, but the idea is, uh, whatever the reason, this guy has just, he's so impressed me over the course of his life as I go back and look at the same with same with really for me, Freddie Mercury. I didn't appreciate him when he was around. I don't think maybe I was too young or I did. I didn't really listen to lyrics. You just get into the rhythm and the pace of it, the sound. I don't know, but a genius. And it's so shameful that he had to hide his lifestyle. Um, and he was banned from touring in America uh, with queen during a certain period of time until they, they came back with live aid and, by then, uh, you know, he didn't last too much longer than I. He died a decade later, I guess. But um, with Warren Zevon, I went to London in October of maybe 88 or 89. And and I went with a girl, uh, an ex-girlfriend at the time. Why did I go to England <laughs> with an ex-girlfriend? Here's why. She always listened to one particular radio station. And they had a contest. They would hide a little key somewhere around Boston. Then they would give you clues and then you'd figure it out, I guess. And uh, they'd give you more clues and more clues and more clues until someone got it. And they did that five times. Maybe it was five days in a week or maybe it was once a week for five weeks. I don't quite remember. However, she cheated <laughs> and good for her. Here's how that happened. Oh, it was such a funny story. I, I, I'm proud of her and ashamed at the same time. She saw the van from the radio station with clear markings on it. She saw a guy get out, look around, and plant the key behind a statue. She waited <laughs> for them to leave. She dug up the little dirt that it was behind. She picked it up, put it in her purse or a pocket, and then went up to her office uh, in the high-rise building where the statue was. And so she let it play out and they gave clues and it's over here and it's by this street and no one got it. So more clues and more clues and more clues. And then she called in and said, hey, I found it. And they said, yeah, you're right. So you won whatever prize that was. One out of five uh, were going to be chosen for the grand prize. I don't know how they uh, arrived at that. Again, it was a long time ago. So she won her prize, her individual prize for being one of the five keys. And I would think it would be to a car, right? If it's a key. No. Nope. It was a trip to London. And as you probably guessed, they drew her name at the end of this contest. 
So it was for the movie Nuns on the Run with Eric Idle, I believe. And uh, so it was a trip to London. And I think he got a pair of sneakers. And um, Melanie Martin says she remembers watching the tribute for Freddie Mercury with my dad. It was a bigger deal than I realized at the time. I agree. So uh, I don't know. She won short money, like a couple of hundred, but maybe a hundred bucks and a trip to London. But all expenses paid. And she asked me to go. I said, what do you want to go with me? I'm your ex. We're not getting back together. We're friends. I love that we're friends. You're a wonderful person. But uh, this isn't going to be some wonderful renaissance or anything. I don't think for either one of us, probably. And she says, yeah, I know. But I would just want to go with you. So we go. And uh, I decided at some point I was going to go for a little walk myself while she took a nap or uh, she was on the phone back to the States or I don't know, whatever she was doing, taking a shower, going for a spa treatment. I don't remember. And I started walking. And I wanted to get lost, not too lost, <laughs> but just I wanted to just go wherever my heart and instinct told me to go. And uh, I found myself sort of in a back alley. It wasn't dark or anything, although it started to rain, of course, because it's London, right? And I look to my right as I'm walking, and there are a couple of kids sitting up against a wall, like they might be working at a restaurant. And... Uh, Young guys, like they've taken a break. Maybe they had some kind of worker clothes on, smocks, maybe dishwasher type stuff. Maybe one had a, a chef's hat, cap or something like that. And I look over and I realized where I was and what the circumstances were of that. While the raindrops are hitting me, I see that I'm in the back alley, the back entrance of a restaurant called Leho Fuchs in Soho. And if you know that song by Warren Zevon, I was walking through the streets of Soho in the rain. He was looking for the place called Leho Fuchs, gonna get a big dish of beef chow mein. Wow. I said, that's the song again, coming back. And I didn't know where I was and it was raining. Just amazing. So then again, back to 2002, I'm watching Letterman. Great show, right? And he turns to Warren Zevon, who's pretty chill about the whole thing, and says, how are you feeling? He says, well, I don't feel as bad as they tell me I am. I said, wow, this is a cool dude, right? And of course, I was already, I just wanted him to play and sing and tell stories. And then Letterman turns to him and says, is there anything you know about life and death that I don't know because... I'm not in your position right now. And Warren said, I don't know, unless it's just to enjoy every sandwich. And I said, another connection. I am known for making sandwiches all the time. My friends would come from all over because I'd make these really great sandwiches with love and care because I, I didn't know how to make anything else, to be honest, until I learned how to make a breakfast burrito. Then it was that, of course, but still loved sandwiches, ate them all the time. Can't get enough of them. It's like a special treat. You can't go around eating a hot fudge sundae all the time, right? As an adult. So sandwiches were my thing all the time, no matter what. If I had to be stuck to one type of food, it would be eggs, any kind of sandwich, really. But of course, the deeper meaning of that is so much more profound. That something as simple as a sandwich can have such an impact. It's not just shove it in your face and go on. We do it because sandwiches are convenient, right? But if you take it for what it is and you stay in the moment and just enjoy not only that sandwich, but every sandwich, I think it kind of helps center you right? It brings you back to a place where you should be, where there's not all this crazy radio frequency noise all around you, but you're just right there. Again, something that I've believed for years. It just brings you to the moment, whatever that is. For some people, it's meditation or deep breathing. For me, it's a sandwich. And ever since I heard that in 2002, it's been a sandwich.
I should be 300 pounds for all the sandwiches I eat. But here's to you, Mr. Warren Zevon. You had a profound effect on a teenage kid, and you will the rest of my life. Certainly, because you're no longer with us. Cheers to you, sir. I know there are a bunch of questions, so let's get to them, and then I'll tell you about a special trip we're going to take. Uh, take. Do you like John Prine? Oh, yeah, it's another one. We just lost him recently. Oh, it's been a hell of a year, 2020, hasn't it been? I mean, we say that every time someone dies, and John Prine, I mean, and, and he died of COVID. See, that's the thing. Not not just a wonderful musician, artist, storyteller like Warren Zevon, like Bob Dylan, like so many others. You could just go on and on and on and on. John Collins, whoever. You could just – I'm not picking favorites. I'm just saying there's James Taylor, Carol King. There's so many wonderful storytellers, and uh, and and – American music life, that when you hear a song, of course it's about the melody. That's what makes it. The music catches your ear. But the lyrics, as you get older and more mature, hopefully catch your, your spirit. And it just means so much more. At least it does now. I mean, it's great to bop along to a song. But when a John Prine or a Warren Zevon, someone touches your heart with great writing, Jim Croce, I mean, there's, there's millions of them. It kind of changes the landscape for it. You realize that, no, they're just not just a musician playing notes, but they're truly poets and artists. Certainly John Prime was one of those. I want you to meet somebody because you know Ken is my tech guy, generally speaking, my wonderful producer, who just does it because we're friends. He's way overqualified for the job. But this is Yusuf. He's sitting in for me this week. Come on and say hi, Yusuf. Hey, Jack. Cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. What are you drinking? I've got a, a Tanqueray tonic in a wonderful classic Spanish G&T Tanqueray goblet. That oh, that's beautiful. Me. You know, when I went to Spain and I had a G&T, it was the same thing. They say we make it in a big goblet like that because we want to bring in all the aroma. It's all about the bouquet before you taste the drink. I love that you're yep. promoting Tanqueray. Are they throwing you a couple of bucks? What's the deal? If, if they do, let's have them throw it our way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and by the way, <laughs> there you go. People yeah, that's no, no. We're drinking, by the way. What's that? People are asking what you were drinking, by the way. So what are you drinking, Jack? A rye? Because I say to you, Warren Zevon was wry and smart, intelligent, had that kind of sense of humor and that wit that I just love. So it's a rye and soda with a little bit of lime. Well, cheers, sir. Cheers to you. I got a question for you, though. You'll have to say the exact name and where it is and all that. I'd like to promote your show. Yusuf has his own show, by the way. He's just doing this as a favor. Uh, so thank you again, sir. It's called the Social Distance Drinking Club, which is a real clever name. But how, how can they find you, Yusuf? You can look us up. We're on, uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. It's uh, Just type in Social Distance Drinking Club and you'll find it. We do three shows a week. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, and the Sunday Day Drink, our 1.30 uh, Pacific Time show. And we've had guests on from all over the place, local here in Arizona. We started it out to promote local, and we even had folks from Guadalajara, the global brand ambassadors, different tequila companies and stuff, coming on and talking drinks and hanging out. So, yeah, check it out. That's great. You make me feel lazy. I only do, <laughs> I only do this once a week. You do it a bunch. Well, I appreciate the shout out, Jack. Absolutely. I appreciate you doing what you do. Thank you. We have more questions? We do. I'll pop some in. I'll pop back That's out. That's why I'm drawn on with another story. I just realized <laughs> looking at the camera, I look like I could be kind of 80s, right? Maybe uh, Warren Zevon meets, um, oh, I don't know. Who? who? Who dressed like this? Are you a werewolf in sheep's clothing, Jack? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. That wouldn't be so bad, would it? Um. Oh, uh, what's his name? Lido. Um, Buzz Gags. That's what I look like. I look Buzz Gags. FJ Khan. Jack, after COVID, will your show come back on? How you doing? Also, and miss your show. Thank you, FJ. Which show are you talking about? If you're talking about Booze Traveler, that's been gone a couple of years now. Um, but The High Road is every Friday night, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. And uh, that's about my journey through cancer and chemo and understanding uh, what CBD and THC 
uh, has done for me and others. Uh, it, it eased my neuropathy, which is chemo pain, uh, which is wonderful. So that's Fridays. I also have a thing called Belly Up, which is a drinking trivia show or trivia drinking show. I don't know, however you want to say that. Uh, we release those about one a week. I think we got another one coming up soon. Uh, if you like trivia and you like drinking, check that out. But that's all on right here, my Facebook or YouTube, depending on where you're watching this. And I always do posts. So uh, just sign up to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on Facebook and turn on your notifications if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, friend me on Facebook or sign up or however that works. And I'll make sure I stay in touch. Who does your hair? <laughs> is that a shot? Nobody did my hair. I was in a rush. What is it sticking out over there? What are you trying to say here? Hold on. Look at that. Actually, I need to get a haircut. Look at that thing. You know, I had the, my COVID hair going on. This is horrible, isn't it? What a rat's nest. And uh, then I finally got a cut when they opened up the barbershops here. And uh, my cutter, uh, my hairstylist did it. I'm sorry, not my cutter, my hairstylist or whatever. I don't know. She wasn't a barber is what I'm trying to say. And But it grows so fast. I don't get it. For my age, having gone through cancer and chemo, I'm lucky I have hair at all. So here's to that. It's the luck because it's pure luck. It's not that I'm doing. That's for sure. Um, how about a show? Tattoos and good booze. That's 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 a guy named Joe who you're going to meet in a little while. Hang out in the green room, Joe. I'll get to you. I'll bring you on. <laughs> maybe, though. Maybe. This, this guy won the contest. Let me tell you about the contest before I get to any more questions. So uh, you can submit your videos to Southie Jack AZ right here. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, at gmail.com, telling me where you would like to go. As you know, I probably know. I shouldn't say as you know. As you may know, I did a show called Booze Traveler on Travel Channel. And I traveled the globe, really, everywhere. And, uh, oh, so honored to do that show. I mean, I really loved it. What an experience. Uh, but it was about culture. It wasn't about getting shit-faced and falling down drunk or anything like that. Uh, it was meeting people and getting to know them and see what they drink, why they drink it, and... The stories they tell when they do are fascinating to me. Uh, so a lot of people are saying, oh, hey, I want you to do that show again. Like, it's just up to me. Or uh, where would you go this? Or what was your favorite that? So I'm going to put that in your hands. You send me a video. Try to make it less than a minute if you can. Uh, about where you would go with me. Where you would want to take me if we were still doing that show. To show me uh, a place you love or a place you want to go. And what would we drink? You submit your video. We narrow it down to three or four. And then you choose the, the best one. Because I, I don't want you to think I'm picking my friends or anything like that. Anyway, this is the second week. And a guy named Joe Caniero, he's going to be on. He's from Boston. Lives in Tennessee now. We didn't choose him because he's from Boston. You picked him. He was the winner. But he's a tattoo artist. So that's why he said, how about a show about tattoos and good booze? Tattoos and booze. Booze and tattoos. I don't know. There's a rhyme there somewhere. Maybe. Back to the questions. We'll get to him soon. Uh, but this is your time, like I always like to say. So what do you want to ask? Yusuf, will you pop that up there? I didn't realize my hair was this bad. Holy smokes, it's getting thick. Now that you have partake of the THC, what country would you like to revisit high? That's a really interesting question. I got to say, though, I'm not a recreational user of cannabis. I use it for inflammation, uh, for when I can't sleep, when the pain comes back from the chemo. Uh, and generally, it's a high CBD to THC ratio, uh, although I do use it. But uh, it's my high has always been cocktails, if, there's, if you want to, I guess, compare. And I know they're different and what have you, but... I suppose that's a good question. I would probably say Amsterdam because uh, it's just so accepted and open. Of course, you know, there's the red light district there, prostitution legal, and you just walk down these alleys. So they tell me, <laughs> and you look in the windows left and right, and uh, you just pick what you want, like mannequins in a window. Really crazy stuff. Crazy because it's so different, I suppose. Um that's a great city, but I, I think anyone, anyone would be enhanced by a little bit of something. And that's why I think Booze Traveler uh, really, you made it popular, of course, but I think why it worked is, uh, you know, sitting down with someone and having a drink with them. It's a great experience. It's just a way of saying, it's like putting out your hand, right? And saying, all right, we're going to have a drink. 
usually that's a peaceful thing, at least at the beginning of it, right? It's an acceptance, a form of, of saying, you're okay, right? I'm okay. Let's have a drink. And we do it for all kinds of reasons, of course, social, mostly, celebratory, sometimes mourning. Uh, we, we use it in so many different things, but around the world, they do it for, oh, so many more reasons than we do it here because we're a melting pot. But these cultures that have been doing it for thousands of years, they make it for a certain reason. They drink it to connect with their ancestors, their spirits, to honor the dead, all of that. So um, just a fascinating thing. But now, if you're talking about cannabis, I, I think I think any place would have been would have been great. Of course, you know I, I couldn't do too much of anything while I was doing the show because I had to be clear headed. I still had to talk to people, so I drank what I what I what it looked like I was drinking. Uh, I just couldn't do it to excess because I'd be a not a blabbering fool, more of a <laughs> blabbering fool than I was on the show. So there you go. Thanks for that question. Who else? What's your favorite sandwich? Says Kev Rod. Oh, that's a good one. You know, I made so many in my day. Uh, I used to get uh, a friend of mine used to come over every day if he could to bug me to make him a pizza bagel. And I would I would make either English muffins or or bagels really crispy. Then I'd take some marinara sauce, right? Nice marinara, put it on there uh, and then melt some cheese over it. Really rudimentary, really basic form of pizza bagel. But he loved them. Oh, he loved them. He was an athlete. And I mean, he was top athlete in the state. Uh, in his category, and he would just eat them like, I mean, he's a big guy, of course, but he would just eat them like they were cookies, just left and right, or potato chips, or whatever you want to say. I also like nice tuna bagel. I had friends come over. Uh, I'd make them tuna bagels, again, on a nice onion bagel, some tuna, extra mayonnaise, sliced thin tomatoes, some leafy lettuce, salt and pepper, and again, crispy bagel. That was always been the thing. I just love it. Since I'm a bacon. I can't eat it unless it's super crispy. Don't get me wrong. Bacon's great. I can eat it raw, right off the pig. <laughs> but I like it crispy. Put it that way. And, and so these onion bagels, one day he came over, my friend. Uh, and I have several friends who will tell you this story. And my mother was making tuna bagels. And she put sprouts on the sandwich. And I said, what the hell is that? Why is your mother putting grass on my sandwich? I said, no, that sprouts. It's a new thing. It's supposed to be really healthy. And it's actually pretty good. And my friend ate it, and every time he came over, he asked for the sprouts so that I'd make it that way. Uh, I also like a nice – I would used to make roast beef and cheese and just melt it in the oven uh, on a sub roll. Oh, I'm getting – I'm not even hungry right now, but just I can feel it right here talking about these sandwiches. Oh, excuse me. I'm in. I'm writing it down. <laughs> which one? There's so many sandwiches. I don't know which one you want. And what are you drinking? Nobody's telling me. I'm, uh, or I'm missing them. I don't know. My favorite cocktails, Laura Marie. Oh, hi, Laura Marie. Uh, favorite cocktails, and she spells it with a U because she's from London, I believe, right? Right in London or England, at least. My favorite cocktails. You know, that's such a good question. Uh, but I don't drink one particular thing. Here's why. Unlike food, which I believe we eat to sustain us, of course, we eat it for flavor and whatever mood we're in, and sometimes we eat our feelings or whatever stress eat, whatever it's called. I think we drink for different reasons than we eat. For me, it's mostly about the atmosphere. Who I'm with, what I'm doing will dictate what I'm drinking. For instance, I'm not the biggest rye fan in the world. Little spicy, little peppery. I like it. I just wouldn't say it's my top drink. But I'm drinking it tonight because of the play on words. Warren Zevon was all those things, but certainly had a wry sense of humor and uh, spelled differently. So I'm drinking a rye because I think he would appreciate that. See, it's about that. So my favorite cocktails change. But some of the ones I enjoyed on the show, on the road, Pisco Sour. Everybody knows I love that because they made it right in front of me with fresh fruit and fresh juice right there from the fruit and the egg white and just whipped it up. It was so good with this beautiful Pisco. It's like liquid diamonds, this sparkling, clear, wonderful liquor that's the clear brandy basically i uh, like the mojito i had in cuba best one ever by far and i like cocktails i, I i'm a fan of the art of mixology because I, I love any kind of artistry so i mean anything anytime you make a drink there's artistry beer wine whatever but cocktails you take it and you mix it and you blend it and you try different things this mixed medium 
so to speak, approach to making drinks. And I like the way they taste. So there you go. Any other comments or questions? Because I got another story for you. David Winstead, I'm trying Eagle Rare and Ginger Beer, kind of like you had last. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Speaking of ginger beer, I would like you to do something else today. Tell me where you're from and who you like to support locally. Because I really appreciate uh, supporting local businesses. I think it would be good to do that more often. And I'm speaking for myself. And maybe you feel the same. And if you do, I hope, I hope you will. Uh, I support a restaurant here that I love called the uh, Breadfruit and Rum Bar. They're closed because of the virus. and But they pivoted. Very smart thing to do. And they're making ginger beer. It's Big Marble. Dot com, I believe, is the company. And they make ginger beer, uh, fair trade, organic, and uh, vegan. It's the, only, it's the only one on the market, I believe, uh, that fits those, that category or those categories. But it's delicious. That's, that's all I care about. I mean, I care about the other things. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that it tastes so good. And, I, and so I'm supporting them. And uh, they're friends of mine. And I just love them to death. And for whatever reason. You support a local business. I think it's a wonderful thing to do because, whew, especially now with this economy, what's, what's going on with the virus and everything else, I think we have to support our local businesses. If we want mom and pop shops anymore, if we want that at all, we have to support those. Otherwise, big corporations just going to take over the world like that yeast that takes over there, the yeast and Seawolf. Yes, books. Love me some books. Back in the day, especially, um, I was going to tell you a story about that, but we got more people coming in, and I know you want to hear from them. Jenny Oliver from Wisconsin, you love supporting Pearl Street Brewery in La Crosse. That's wonderful. And Island City Brewery. They're both breweries. They don't, <laughs> they don't have to be bars or drinks. They can be a grocery store, cleaners, anything you want, but I'm glad we're on the same page. Ron Conkoma, New York. Support Rolling Smoke Grill, family-run business. And by the way, when you put the comments up, you can hashtag those businesses or put the at sign so we can get them some press and publicity in the neighborhood or the city or the town or municipality you're from. Let's get them some business. Let's support them that way. Why not? There's got to be at least tens of you watching this show. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they'll get one more customer. I don't know. Connor for Colorado, local breweries, Van Dak Vodka, Long Tucky Gin, Larry at Lodge Brewery Beer, Go Colorado, Jackie Green. Well, that's nice. I'm glad you love your state. I certainly do. I've just been in so many of them. My home state, Massachusetts, I was born in Boston, grew up in South Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, moved to Phoenix when I was a kid, and then went back to Boston, then went to Las Vegas. Then to California, where I've been since 96. But I came to Phoenix, where I am now, uh, to do chemo for my cancer. So what about you? You've been around? What's your favorite state? The one you live in now? The one you were born in? Or perhaps another one? Carrie and Everett. Givat. Evett? Evat. Sorry, I don't know how to say that. I'm so, I apologize. From Kingston, Tennessee. You support Monkey Town Brewery at Old Capitol Public House. Oh, that just sounds like a fun place. That sounds like just a real rich, old, historic place. You know, it was fun when I went to Tennessee. I played some old-timey baseball from back in the day. Uh, no gloves. Big gloves. I think in the 18, 18, mid-1800s, 1850s, 1860s, the, the original rules or whatever it was. It was so fun. I loved that place. And then we drank there, of course. Tennessee's great. Some moonshine, all good stuff. What time we got? It's almost time to bring in my guest. Or oh, we should have. Amen. San Diego here. Babe Kombucha. And so Suja juice. And Topo Chico. Suja. Not Soju. Not Soju. Not that. We're from Elko, Nevada. Supported Hunter Rays, but they didn't make it through the quarantine. I'm sorry to thank you, Dave Winston. Thank you for pointing that out. A lot of businesses, unfortunately, are not making it through the quarantine. Just like a lot of people aren't. When you talk about the business, you got to talk about the people. A lot of people dead, unfortunately. And uh, we certainly won't get into the politics of it, but it's a shame, for sure. And so I hope your family's not affected. I'm sure you probably know somebody who is. And I hope the businesses you love and support will keep going on, and they will with your support. Bet Barry, we're at a social 
distance drinking club. We've been celebrating Brenna's five anniversary all week. Uh, are you part of the social distance drinking club? Is Yusuf, this one of your boys here? I don't know. Maybe you want to come out and tell yeah. me who's that? Yes, that's uh, that's one uh, that's one of my uh, co-hosts. That's Brett Barry. Oh. oh, what's his name? Brett Barry. Brett Barry. You Brett. remember Brett? Yes, of course, of course. That's oh, Brett. hi, Brett. Sorry about that. Yes. He's plugging Ren House uh, Brewing Company's five-year anniversary. They are oh, chugging along. Ha happy anniversary. five, Ren House. Hope you do five more or fifteen more. I don't know why I said five. You want <laughs> you want it to be fifty more, not five. Okay. Uh, what else we got? So, all right. So, let me tell you about this contest. Uh, and 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 why it just it's fortuitous that you chose this guy to win. And I'll tell you, when I was doing Booze Traveler, I think it was, I don't know, 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. They say our next trip is to New Zealand. Great. I forget where we were or where we went after that, but we're going to go to New Zealand. I just thought it was great. Uh, until I ate the hoo-hoo grub. <laughs> Had to eat a worm this big that I pick out of a tree uh, and it just exploded in my mouth. It was so juicy. But my host said, this is what we do here. You want to do it with us? I said, of course, absolutely. And had some drinks, as you might remember, uh, that stag beer, uh, a certain part of the stag. We won't get into that in Wellington. Uh, but I, New Zealand's fascinating. Then the Maoris uh, and... The, the, I mean, the All Blacks are probably the greatest sports franchise in the world. With apologies to the New York Yankees in baseball, uh, the Boston Celtics in basketball, especially during the 60s, the Montreal Canadiens in hockey, the All Blacks. And I got to, I got to talk to a guy who was voted the 20th century's greatest uh, rugby player. And uh, it was just great. I got to have beers with him and everything. But the one thing that the whole crew was geeked out over is we were going to go to Hobbiton. You know what Hobbiton is, right? Where they filmed on this 1,250-acre land, The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now, I read that book when I was a kid. Like I said, I loved reading books when I was a kid. I just couldn't sit still long enough. So if somebody really recommended strongly, I would. Well, they did that in seventh grade. And I read Lord of the Rings, and I loved it. And I don't know why I was thinking this, but every time I saw a precious, and there's all these S's written in to the, to the text. For some reason, I thought that was a snake. <laughs> Clearly, I was way off. And, but I didn't read the rest of the books. I mean, The Outsiders was a great book, right? S.E. Hinton, a 14-year-old girl wrote that book. And she had to say S.E. on the book, on the cover, because they wouldn't print it if it was from a teenage girl. And it sat around for years before it became famous. What else? Illusions by Richard Bach is a book that changed my life. Separate Peace, uh, Red Sky at mo and Morning. But, but my mother gave me Illusions. That's why I read that. And the same guy who wrote Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And it's about the possibility of, of, of life and how we look at it. And, 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 and that life really is mostly how you look at it. It changed my life. It's just really fascinating, wonderful book. Uh, but I read Lord of the Rings, but here it is. I had not seen any of the movies. And the crew looked at me like, what? You haven't seen this and that? And they throw out names and Frodo and Bilbo Baggins and this and that. And I'm like, no, I've not seen any. And I have nothing against them. I just, I guess I didn't get around to it. I don't, I don't know why. I just, I just didn't. So I'm thinking, oh, do I have to scramble and watch 27 hours of, of, of all these movies? What do I have to do here? So I said, forget it. I'm just going to enjoy the experience and I'm going to enjoy my crew uh, enjoying it. So uh, we went. And of course, since then, I've seen one of the movies, but I think it was the wrong one. So I didn't I didn't <laughs> I didn't recognize the set. It wasn't uh, I guess it wasn't filmed mostly on this set. I don't know. But uh, Peter Jackson is brilliant. They're great movies. All of that. Uh, I just haven't seen them. So. It's Hobbiton, New Zealand. And uh, can you put up some of those photos? We have, this is it. This is me walking through it. Uh, that's, is that, I think this was Frodo's house here. You're not supposed to go inside, but they let me do it. They closed it down for us. It was first thing in the morning. Uh, they just held it a little bit so we could film. And we got another one too, maybe? I'm not sure. That's walking around. Is that the Shire? Is that what we call that thing? 
And that, of course, to me, <laughs> was the best part of the whole thing. That's the Green Dragon. You know that, right? That's where we go have drinks. And let me tell you about that place. As I told you, the All Blacks are so popular in rugby and the soccer, which they call football, all of that stuff. Everything is so popular. That place right there, put that picture back up, would you, Yusuf? That place right there sells more beer than any other place in New Zealand. And it's not even close. Right there. I mean, you think football stadiums, soccer stadiums, rugby, whatever, anything. All of it. Nothing. Right there sells the most beer. By far. So, the winner of this week's contest, who you chose, happened to be number four, if you were watching the videos, by the way. And uh, again, send in your videos if you want to be considered. Uh, and we also post where you can vote all of that stuff. So don't worry. We'll, we'll get all that information out to you. But send your videos right here, by the way. Make them fun, funny, uplifting, uh, and not too long. You'll have a good chance if you do that, I guess. But this guy who won the contest said, I want to take Jack back to the Green Dragon, back to Hobbiton, New Zealand. Mata Mata, I think is where they call it, is what they call it. But it's some say it's right in there. Some say it's, well, just outside of Mata Mata, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to go back and drink. But you chose him. And uh, here he is. His name is Joe Lauren Conyera. How do you say it exactly, Joe? And welcome exactly. to the show. It's funny because the business we run in tattoos, we have a lot of women we tattoo. And my wife, she knows a good catch when she sees one. So she. Uh, oh, she Joe, hang on a second. We can't hear you. You're there. really muffled, Joe. How's that? Any better? Oh, what happened? We, we're losing you. You're very, uh, you're really distorted and, and real quiet. Any better? Uh, only, only slightly. I can't hear you, Yusuf. What's going on here? Do we know with that? Was he didn't test like that, did he? Or, or uh, did he, Yusuf? What do you say? Yusuf says good. Uh, you're a little more muffled than you were before, Joe. But uh, I'm not sure we can fix it at this point. I don't know how hard it is for you to hear him, Jack. But uh, we can try our best. If you've got a pair yeah. of headphones, if you've got a pair of headphones, you can plug into your computer, Joe. Maybe it might be a good thing to do, and then we can pop right back. Yeah, yeah let's do that. It. We'll pop you out, and you can come back in a minute. All right, we'll bring him back in a minute. But you, people ask me all the time, where would you go back? To? I would go back to every single place. I did 73 episodes of Booze Traveler. Well, 63 of that show, Booze Traveler. 10 of Booze Traveler Best Bars, which was just domestic. We just shot that in the States. Uh, but any of those places I would go back to. Or new ones. It wouldn't matter. But I'd love to go back. And I'll watch the movies this time if we go back. But in the meantime, we will take a virtual tour of Hobbiton. We showed you the pictures. We'll bring them back up again. And, uh, and it was amazing walking through that where no one else was around. Because as you know, it's quite the tourist attraction. And there are thousands upon thousands. It, just, it's, it looks like the lines at Disney once they opened it. But we had free run of the place, so we could film and, and do it ourselves. One of the benefits, uh, but it was just it was just great. So I'm really looking forward to why this guy, the winner, Joe, wants to go back there. I know he has a very specific reason, and maybe he's a fan of the movies, and maybe he'll make fun of me, <laughs> as he should, because I've not seen the movies. In the meantime, we'll take a couple of more questions, if you got any, and uh, then we'll bring Joe in, and we'll talk to him about Hobbiton, New Zealand. Jack asks Aaron Finley Sykes, if you went off on a grand adventure, where would you go? Grand adventure. Huh. Well, there's a thousand places I might go for a grand adventure. I don't know. Depends on what I want, right? If it's the outdoors, if it's uh, a bar crawl, if I wanted to uh, go to a top of a mountain or wonderful beaches, you know, I thought that's a really good question because every episode for me of the show was a grand adventure. I mean, we did some fun stuff, not just the touristy things, which I learned how to travel on that show. Not, not only how to travel light, but what to do and what not to do, what to avoid and what to see for sure. But not the what's, the who's. Talk to people. 
everywhere you go, the locals, because you'll go home with a real flavor. You'll feel the, the flavor of the place on you and in you when you, you'll bring it home with you because that's, it's not about their streets or their buildings or their monuments. It's about the people, right? So Grand Adventure, I, I just want to go somewhere and meet a lot of people. I don't know. I'd like to go back to Lake Como in Italy. Uh, France was great. Armenia was beautiful again. Uh, so many places. Siberia, maybe not. <laughs> it was too cold. It was like 39 below or something like that. The wind chill factor made it worse. We were on Lake Baikal. Oh, it was painful. The drones crashed. Cameras wouldn't work. Would you ever come back to Seattle? Of course I would, Yvonne. I love Seattle. You know, I've, I've never been uh, to the Space Needle, though. I've seen it. Took a picture there. Went to Pike Market. That was really cool. Seattle was great. Just rains too much for me to live there, but I love it. We want to join you under a waterfall in the north of Thailand. You in? That sounds great. We flew up to Chiang, uh, Chiang Mai, I guess it was. Not Chiang, oh, Chiang Rai, not Chiang Mai. I always get those two confused. And that was in the north. Uh, didn't see any waterfalls. But uh, Thailand is so beautiful. Way underrated as a beautiful country. Really, so was Vietnam, by the way. So was Cambodia. Yes, I'm in. When are we going? <laughs> Send me the time. I'll meet you there. Melanie Martin, best unseen travel companion on a show? Question mark. Funny camera guy, great producer, best fixer. Oh, oh, that's a good question. Sure, we all have our favorites. Just like parents have their favorite kids. Come on. I'm not a, I'm not a father, but I know. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, by the way. Here's to you. Salud. I know that parents have favorite kids. I know they, ha they have to, maybe some of them. So yeah, I had my favorites because the crew would always do a few episodes, half the episodes, the third of the episodes, then they'd switch out because it's so exhausting, that kind of travel and filming six days a week, long hours. I mean, come on, only an idiot would do every episode. <laughs> what are they going to do, though? Can't get another host. I'm glad they didn't get another host. I was happy to do it. I was tired, but I never complained. Yeah, I had some. There's some people who, I mean, I loved when someone was so excited uh, where we were for whatever reason, whatever connection they had it to it, uh, great emotional connections. I mean, like, like our producer in the field was so geeking out over Hobbiton. It's like a little boy, his voice raised, and he was hopping around on his sneaks. It was, I loved to see people experience joy in whatever way that is. And oftentimes I've found travel does that for me. But again, not the place. I don't want to come home and say, hey, guess what? I saw the Eiffel Tower in Paris or I saw the pyramids of Giza. It's not about that in the London dungeon. Nothing. No. People. People I met. That's what does it for me now. And, you know, I, I like to see things. Don't get me wrong. But Machu Picchu, that's great. In, in Peru, wonderful. But the people I met there, people that invited me in for drinks, the people that, that were selling things on the street and were so friendly and just wanted to talk. And I'm talking about my days off. They didn't know I was there filming. But they just knew I was different. And they wanted to hear stories from America. or well, the United States, of course. Of course, it's all America, South America, North America. But from the U.S., tell me what it's like there. I said, well, what is it like here? Show me around. What, I sh what should I do? That's what travel does for me. It really fills me because I always thought that our experiences really, honestly, is what made us happy. Not piling money in the bank or fancy cars or houses. Maybe it does that for you or some other people. And no offense. Hey, great. If it does that for you, good for you. But for me, travel. I'd spend every last penny I have to go somewhere to talk to some people from another place just to get that culture. Okay, uh, if we're back with Joe, let's let's test out his thing here. What do we got? How are we doing? One, two, three. Good. No, nah, it's all it's all muffled, Joe. We'll keep we'll keep you off for a couple of minutes because you're the winner. But it's so muffled we can't even hear you. Tell me about this special drink. The special drink was a golden ale I made infused with Earl Grey tea. What is, what is the connection to Hobbiton? Well, Earl Grey is Gandalf the Grey. 
<laughs> That's a stretch, but okay. <laughs> so now when you get the ale mixed in with the bergamot, you get a nice hoppy and fruity kind of taste to it. Aha. Uh-huh. So what would what would we drink if we went to the I, I feel like a contestant on the old uh what's that game called? Uh, the dating game. If we went what would you drink? Where would Okay, so if we went to the Green Dragon, what would we have, Joe? I think I would have to go with you and ring the bell and buy everybody around and let them tell me what to drink. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that sounds better. It's a little bit better. Stay right there. That's some uh, that's some stash and beard you got. Is that part of the whole tattoo vibe? No, nah, you know, I've been growing it for a while. I finally got it, so I'm proud to have it. So what's this thing you were talking about? I know you're a tattoo artist, and you said you wanted to be the one to do my first tattoo. Why is that? Well, uh, you know, you grew up in Boston like I did. I figured you're uh, – how old are you now, Jack? Like 48? 57. 50? Bullshit. I swear. Wow. I'm sure, I'm sure it's all over the internet. Well, growing up in Boston, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. It's it's a different vibe and a different mind frame to have. And uh, seeing you on Booze Traveler, when you said, man, I'm Jack from South Boston. It's one thing I know. Bartending out there, one drink brings people closer together. And it's a lot of things people do in Boston, but we drink. And, uh, I was going through the worst time in my life, and uh, Booze Traveler was something I got to sit down and get me through it. And it was four seasons. I never never looked away. And uh, oh, I'm thank glad, you. man. You've been like an idol to me. I love it. Thank you. I, I want to apologize that we're not going to have the full time on the show. So you sent me your number. I'll call you in the next couple of days, and we'll have a, n- a nice chat off the air. Sure, or we will sure. do this just off the air. You know what I mean? Off this. Uh, yeah. Or we can even do this and have a drink. But I'll call you on the phone and we'll catch you up some more. Uh, if 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 I was going to get a tattoo, which I haven't had one in my 57 years plus of, of living, uh, which, what should I get? Uh, would you make it a booze traveler one? Would you make it a, a country outline? Uh, would you make it a Boston thing, a shamrock? What, what, what would you recommend wow. since you're the expert? Well, you know... It being an expert at tattooing, the, the, the person always picks, you know, you got to pick it. I got to stick it. I said it in the video, but the biggest thing I'd say would be to look inside of yourself. And I think booze traveler, you know, did a lot for you, but I think a lot of people get it confused. Booze traveler isn't just a show. It's a state of mind. Like when you travel around, everyone's a booze traveler. If you think about it. We go out, we have drinks with people from here to there, and we get to know one another. So I think you are a booze traveler, and maybe that's something you should get. You know, it'd be kind of strange for me to to get the name of a show <laughs> I no longer do, but maybe the essence of that. I think you're right. The spirit of that, yeah. uh, what that all meant, maybe that's even me. just a little globe, something, I don't know. Let me think about that. And I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but but we'll talk about it at least in that direction. Joe, how's that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, buddy. What's the name of your shop in Tennessee and what city is it in? We're in Columbia, Tennessee. It's Revolution Inc. And uh, we're six-time award winning. We've been voted best of Maury County two years in a row. We've only been open two years, but we're doing a good job and we're, we're making a name for ourselves, so. You know, it's, it's pretty good to have that kind of accomplishment when you first get started out there on your own. Columbia, Tennessee. Yeah, we're about an hour south of Nashville. So what brought you to Columbia from Boston? Well, uh, you know, Boston, I love the place. You know, it's home. And, uh, man, if there's one place I'd ever eat, it'd be uh, black and gray, black and white over in Spencer. That's a great place to eat. But heroin and a lot of other stuff took over the neighborhoods. And I was young, so I had to get out. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a good place to be. It wasn't good for the neighborhoods anymore. And I had to go. And uh, it, it broke my heart to leave home. But when I got to Tennessee, it's like I really did find a new home. It's been beautiful here since 20 years old. I got here. I'm 43 now. And I don't think I'll ever leave. Wow. You've been there longer than you were in Boston. Why would yeah. you pick that place in Tennessee of all the 50 states and the hundreds and hundreds of cities and towns? Why there, Joe? Well, I went to um, Missouri to help my cousin out, who's like my best friend growing up. And my family uprooted and left while I was in Missouri. I was staying at the Whiteman Air Force Base in Knob And um, my stepdad got a call to go to GM. He got a call back. 
So they uprooted and left, and I really didn't have no home to go home to, which was kind of fortunate for me. So I got to start a new life in Tennessee, and it, it worked out pretty good. Good for you, man. We'll we'll talk this week. Thanks for that video, but you have to you have to show me the uh, the painting. You have a painting of Hobbiton. Yeah, let me uh, let me move it aside. See what I can do. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's the green door, right? That's the green door. Did you paint that? Yes, sir. Wow, you're talented. Congratulations. Let's let's throw up our picture. Uh, next to that, Yusuf, let's show the picture of me at the door. Pretty close, huh? <laughs> Pretty damn close. I mean, on your part, you did a great job, Joe. Well, Thank thanks for being much. on, and thanks for your, your winning video. And by the way, uh, there is some talk that at the end of all of this, maybe if it works out that way, no promises, we're going to choose one of the winners and actually go to a place. Wow. Just something to keep in mind, folks, when you're making your videos. Just me and you and a couple of drinks. So we'll talk about that down the road. Uh, Joe Lauren Conero, is that how you say it? Yeah, Joe Canero. Joe Canero, but you say Joe Lauren, right? Yeah, Joe Lauren, because uh, me and my wife wanted to stick together on this journey. So my wife's name is Lauren. Oh, one of those. So you put them together. I get it. Okay, so Joe Canero. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks, brother. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Jack. Uh, and, I, and I'll call you this week, I promise. Thank you. All right, man. There you go. Winner. Video number four. He's great, wasn't he? Loves Hobbiton. And I loved it, too. I had a good time, although I missed so many references. Oh, this is where this happened. And the ring and the precious and the Bilbo and the Baggins and every, Frodo and everything else. And by the way, again, I love the book. I'm not making fun of people who love that those movies. And the actors were great. And by the way... Uh, I went to see when I was living in Los Angeles, which I technically I still do. I'm here uh, and I'm just done with chemo. So I'll be back in L.A. soon. I'm right in Phoenix. Uh, but I, I went to a, a SAG event, Screen Actors Guild event, uh, where the cast from The Lord of the Rings was there. And I was like, and they didn't show the movie. Sometimes they do. And I was twiddling my thumbs because I, I, I understood none of the references, really. And the book was so many years ago, as you know, that's. I read it like 45 years ago and never since. So, um, but the cast was really cool. And I think all of them, except for one, all decided because they spent so much time together shooting these three movies that they would all get tattoos uh, as, as mementos, I guess, of, of their time together. I thought that was beautiful. So there you go. A lot of Lord of the Rings fans out there right now rolling their eyes at me, I'm sure. Any other questions, Yusuf, before we wrap this thing up? I can't believe this time goes by so fast. Uh, any comments? Kiara, did I say that right? Please say yes or no after this. I had my first tattoo six months ago at 46. I love it. Two exclamation points. Go, Jack. Do it. A globe and a glass and a green heart. Or is that supposed to be a shamrock? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. It looks like a green heart to me. That's wonderful. What possessed you? to get a, a, a tattoo at 46, and good for you. You're never too old to start living, right? Or to continue living. I don't believe in any of it. They say age is just a number. A million people have said it. I believe that so much. I went through cancer. I went through chemo. I'm 57 years old. I have all my hair. I have my health. Relatively speaking, I feel great. And I'm, and I'm so fortunate to have any or all of that. Thank you for being a part of it, by the way. Thank you for making that show uh, what it was. And thank you for watching this. Uh, we call it a couple of different things because we haven't settled on anything. It's Jack's Place. It's uh, vir Sunday Virtual Cocktail Hour or something like that. I don't care what we call it, right? A rose by any other name or a cocktail by any uh, That's not true. A cocktail by another name is a different cocktail. What am I saying? Anyway, uh it's really great to have you and to join in and to ask questions. And I saw that last comment about maybe a, a globe superimposed over something like that, all of that. I'll really think about that. And by the way, you can comment even after this show is over. It lives forever on Facebook and YouTube. How about a tattoo of the world superimposed on an old fashioned glass, says Diane? Maybe. Yeah, give me some ideas. 
you have the email address, southyjackaz at gmail.com. You can send your videos there. You can send your ideas for a tattoo. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll put that all together. Or maybe I'll have you decide where I physically go with a winner if we do that. And maybe I'll get a tattoo of that place. How about that? I don't know. We'll see. In any event, it's been great. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of the this evening, Sunday night. Uh, I'm back next Friday with the high road. And that's 830 Eastern, 530 Pacific. Uh, but I just appreciate you very much. Cheers and stay safe.